Narita Street Food. Ten food you must try. Samurai Junjiro Channel. Hi, I'm Samurai Junjiro, born and raised in Japan. In today's video, we'll take a walk around Narita. We'll be showing you 10 shops from the classic to modern. There will be a cover on lavish eel bento box in the end, so hope you look forward to that as well. Now, let's get started. Today, we are headed to Narita City in Tokyo's neighboring prefecture, Chiba. And here we are at Narita Station. It takes an hour and 20 minutes on direct train with a Sobu line from Tokyo Station. From Narita International Airport, where the most international flights are arriving and departing, it's only 10 minutes on Keisei Line. So now, let's move closer to the target destination. We wanted to do a cover on Narita-san Shinshoji Temple today. From either Narita or Keisei Narita stations, it takes 15 minutes by foot. On the way to the temple are numerous retro buildings with Japanese color. By the time you have walked for 10 minutes, you'll start to spot souvenir store and restaurants showing up more. And now, we are here. This is Narita-san Shinshoji Temple, one of the busiest tourist spots in Narita. To this historical temple that existed from around 940 AD, more than 10 million people come visit per year. Only within the first three days of New Year, approximately 3 million people come visit, and it's known as the top temple to have Japanese people visiting. Let's begin our street food tour from here. Eel is famous around this area, and there are numerous shops that host it as specialty. In the video, we'll cover three different eel menus. The first one to go is this shop right here. Cher's Kitchen. The shop used to be located in a different place, but moved closer to the entrance of the temple in December last year. Its highly recommended menu is grilled skewered eel. Sweet sauce on the eel is very fragrant on heat. Surprised to find eel for this price. It's crispy on the outside and very fluffy inside. It's fatty and melty too. The following store is called Hayashida Honten. The shop sells rice crackers since 1912. You can pick up freshly prepared cracker made of rice. And we shall be trying this rice cracker in skewers. It's in a blend of fermented miso paste and soy sauce flavor with a slight spicy kick. It comes with dried green onion on top, so it's very aromatic too. The cracker is light, but with moderately hard texture. You really taste the sweetness of rice as you chew. The combination of the miso and rice are perfect together. Let's check out Kintoki no Amataro Yaki. This shop began in 1961 to sell obanyaki. Obanyaki is a Japanese classic dessert made of two circle pancakes and sweet red bean filling prepared on iron mold. There's two flavors to choose from, and we chose sweet white bean filling this time. The pancake is very lightweight and has crispy outside. The smell of sweet pancake is so tempting. The filling is sweet white bean paste made out of white kidney beans simmered sweet with sugar. Chunks of beans are still left for a good texture. It's naturally sweet with beans rather than sugar. It's a dessert that brings out Japanese feel. Let's now move on to checking out Sankyu. This shop serves takoyaki octopus balls located near the entrance of Shinshoji Temple. This shop is known to host some unique takoyaki balls. And that unique menu is this ebimayo. Instead of regular octopus, it has shrimps inside. The sauce and bonito flakes are very fragrant. 
The dough for the bar is chewy and creamy. It comes with mayonnaise inside too. The sweetness from the shrimp and textures are spot on. The mayonnaise has melted inside for creamy and rich flavor. It's sure our takoyaki you can find elsewhere. Now let's take a look at Sawawa. This is a dessert shop opened in 2019 that hosts green tea menus. There's so many green tea desserts to choose from, but we'll be trying this special one for now. This is a green tea steamed bun, which matcha is included in its dough. Out of all, the most high end green tea called Uji Matcha is chosen for this wonderful scent. It comes with sweet white bean filling, which also includes plenty of green tea. The slight bitterness of the tea is outstanding. It comes with chestnut too, so you can taste the natural sweetness as well. It tastes sophisticated. Carrying it next to Peanuts no Kimuraya. From this shop, you can purchase peanuts, which is one of Chiba's local specialty. We are not just trying peanuts, but grilled mochi that are prepared in front of the shop. On grilled skewed mochi, miso is layered on top and served with another quick grill. The smell of grilled miso paste is very appealing. You can taste and feel the peanut as it's included in the paste. Mochi made of sticky rice are very chewy and has addictive mouthfeel. Sweet miso paste is very flavorful, so it goes perfect with mochi. And we'll be checking out on、um, Panchaya. The bakery has been acknowledged by many as a shop that is frequently featured on TV and SNS. There are countless to choose from, but we wanted to pick out Unagi Pan. As the name represents, it's a unique bread with eel inside. The bread is airy and moist. Inside the bread comes with bechamel sauce and dried seaweed lava. It also includes Japanese pepper for its amazing scent. I've never tasted anything so unique like this. Now, moving to talk about Narita Yume Bokujo. This is another dessert shop run by a farm started in 1887. You find so many desserts made out of fresh milk in the shop. And today, we'll be trying this dessert. This is ice cream made from freshly squeezed milk. It's one of the top sellers of the shop. Natural sweetness of milk spreads wide in your mouth. So rich, but aftertaste is refreshing. The taste is not heavy at all. So, I could finish this mountain of ice cream with no problem. We shall now be examining Komafukudo. Komafukudo is a shop opened in 2015, serving sesame as its specialty. The sesame seeds here are pounded in a mortar, so, people favor the shop for its sweetness and aroma like almond. From the shop, We'll be trying this fried snack, which of course uses sesame seeds. This is potato croquette. For the protein in the croquette, Japanese wagyu beef is used. Sesame seeds are packed inside and it's very fragrant. The flavor of the meat and sesame really elevates the whole finish. Reasonable croquette, but with very rich ingredients. And finally, to unveiling Kawatoyo. It's a 1910 established shop that serves eel. This is one of the most popular shops in the area. We headed to the store past noon at 1, but it took us 180 minutes to dine in. So, for today, we'd like to share with you bento box that you can buy without having to wait in line. It's a little pricey, but you get to try the taste of freshly grilled eel that is no different from the one you can have in the shop. This savory smell of the eel is so appetizing. I can't stop drooling. Let's now take a bite with the sauce poured on top. Its sweet aroma of the sauce is fantastic. I could eat rice 
just with the smell in the air. Eel is so fluffy and with sickness too. It's fatty and melts once it's in your mouth, loving the firm texture of the grilled surface on outside. Let's have it with rice. The sweet sauce, fatty eel and rice are in perfect harmony. You won't believe this is a to-go bento box menu since it tastes authentic. Trying it with Japanese pepper is our favorite, although eating it just that is perfect. The refreshing scent and spiciness of the pepper really goes together to enhance eel's flavor. What a perfect bento box! If there's a restaurant you'd like me to introduce, let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe to my channel too. Well, that's it for today. See you in the next video.